In the previous video, I looked at the Yamaha RSS70 mini system, the one that had the buggered up display, which I think is probably something on the, the main board itself, maybe a bad IC. But we did get the CD player going, it needed a belt. At the time, he said he didn't use a cassette deck and didn't really care about it. All he wanted was CD and auxiliary, basically. He's had a change of heart. Now he's decided he wants to, me to look at the cassette deck, so let's fix it. So this time we're going to look at this Yamaha KXWS70 cassette deck, which is part of that mini system. Uh, the fellow that owns this initially did not want to spend any money to fix it, but uh, after talking to him and suggesting it was probably just belts that were bad, he's decided to see if we can get this one running. So let's pop this one apart. If you missed this one in the last video when I tested it, it played, and then when I went to stop it and go into reverse mode, it stopped working on both decks. So likely what's happened is a belt is slipping and it's gonna need belt replacement for both decks. I'm sure they're independent. Maybe they're one belt for both. Who knows, we'll find out when I get it apart. So pop out five screws and uh, pop the unit apart. This unit of course has got that multi cable. There's the unit, it's got two independent decks. Good chance it's the belt on both of them. It will check the operation again. Yeah, see, it's not doing anything. It's just clicking. The uh, belt is slipping. Yeah, that's what's wrong, is the belt is slipping. So let's see if I can find some replacement belts. They don't, they look to be square belts on this. They're not even flat belts. So I might get away with just replacing the two square belts and uh, that should hopefully solve the problem on this one so let's first of all tear out the decks tape decks on this may just lift out I'll just cut out some wire ties here uh looks like there may be a few a few screws that hold these down I've never worked on one of these ones before these were things that we really didn't see much of in the repair shop. I'm not saying they didn't break, I'm just saying that was something that wasn't, uh, wasn't seen a lot. So that cover comes off there. And the decks themselves should lift out. Oh, it lifts out one, as one solid piece. Excellent. If I take out this other screw here, this will probably separate that uh, dampening mechanism for the, the front paddle. I think. And then I can lift. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't have taken that out. Let's see here. Um, take off the spring. decks should lift out and leave this, this uh, dampening arm behind. Okay, there. Now the decks are out from the rest of the mechanism. They can unplug the two plugs, or four plugs, I should say, the two audio plugs for the heads, and the two control plugs for the two decks. This should remove the deck from the chassis, I think, the three screws. That hold them in place. I have not unplugged it from the board as I don't want to damage those connectors. Uh, these are not the ones that normally just pop apart by pressing on them. It looks like you got to pry them open. And I don't want to go down that road and risk damaging them. So we can just lift the deck out like that and place the other one out of the way. Now I can get at the screws on the back side here to access the belts that are going to be worn. It'll be one belt anyway that's bad. And that's the main 
the capstan belt. So let's uh, remove these screws. And then I'll see if I've got a belt that will fit. Because I don't know if I've got one. But uh, I'm doing the record play side first, just in case I only have one. And uh, I may have to just replace the one belt if that's all I've got. As I say, I don't know what I've got here that might, might or might not fit this unit. Another screw here. Okay, the head wires here have to be carefully removed from the holder so that I can lift up the, the, uh, the back and release the belt. It's got a single belt on it. Take out this screw on the back that holds this little circuit board. I'll actually unplug that to get that wire out of the way. Just undo this screw here to take off this little circuit board. That way I can swing the motor out of the way. Drop this connector out of the way. Now I can swing the motor out. And this is the belt that's going to have to be replaced. It's uh, slipping. It's not broken, but it certainly is. Uh, I mean, this is one that I actually even might benefit from boiling because it hasn't turned to mush but it certainly has lost its elasticity so this is one that might benefit from boiling but I'm going to see if I've got one we'll just replace it I'm not going to do the other one over here I think the other belt is probably okay this is the one that drives the reels and it appears to have a fair bit of torque so I'm not going to change that one I'm just going to change this one here because this is the one that operates the mechanism so if it slips the mechanism stops turning Okay, I've gone through my belts. I found one that is probably close enough to make it work. It goes around one pulley one way and the other the other way and then around the motor. So I gotta kinda slip it onto the motor here and then around the back side of this pulley and try to get everything all pushed together. Very cheap design, this thing. And not that easy to get the belts into. Goes around one pulley, one, one way like this. And then the other side goes around this one, this way. But as you can see, there's really not a heck of a lot to hold this in place as I get the motor in, in the way here. You gotta kinda Loop, loop it around over the motor pulley at the same time and try to maintain it in position. Of course the guy that owns this, he was humming and hawing because he says he doesn't use cassettes and then he thinks, oh wait a minute, my boat has a cassette deck so I might want to make a tape to play on my boat. I think I liked his answer better when he said, I don't use tapes. Don't fix it.
see how I did that? I center the bearings. And then uh, hopefully everything's in place. We'll turn it and see if everything turns like it's supposed to. I'm not quite right, but it's close enough that I can put some screws into it and then I should be able to get the uh, pulley centered, get the belt centered on the second pulley. It's, it's not riding in the proper groove right now. We'll deal with that in a minute once I get a couple screws in just to hold it in place. Second one in place. All right, now if I turn the the belt, it should drop into the groove on this bottom pulley, or this bottom groove on the second pulley, because right now it's riding around the um, the metal rim. It's got to get it into the pulley itself. There we go. Okay, now it's where it's supposed to be. It's riding around in the proper groove. So this will certainly, I think, fix this one. And whether I have another belt to fix the other one, that is the question. I don't know whether I do or not. But at least this will uh, make this one work. So that should fix that deck. I'll try the other deck and just see whether I actually do have a screw that will that will uh, work. All right. So that's got that one fixed. We'll just reattach the little circuit board here. And then I'll do the same on the other. I'll see if I've got a belt that will fit it. So that's, that one's done. And it just sits back in just like, like that. And then the three screws that hold the deck against the base plate. See, I know what's going to happen on this. We'll change the belts. He'll take it home. He won't use them. He won't use the tape deck. And then uh, a couple of years from now, he'll go to use the tape deck. And something won't work. Uh, generally what happens you know which way it is because the the, um, the pin spacing is different on each end of the plug so you can't plug it in the wrong way because the side is wider this is the side that goes to the circuit board if we look at it it's actually physically wider than the plug right down there so you can't mess up you can only get the one in the correct way okay I'll do the same on the other deck and see if I've got another see if I have another um, belt so working on the other deck is exactly the same as the first one we'll just remove the screws remove the bracket and change out the belt if I've got one I might have another one that will fit it Like that. 
old belt. And I'll find another one that will fit it. Like the other one, there's still a fair bit of torque on this other belt, so I'm not going to bother with it. I'll just do this, the capstan belt. Thread it around and around the pulley. And onto the motor. how the cheap these mechanisms are. The back is what actually holds the back of the, the bearing in place. mechanism back in. Put a couple screws in just to hold it in place and then I'll try to get that belt back into its proper groove. It's in the groove and it's not on the pulley properly, on the motor pulley. It's got to use my dental pick, I guess, to pull that on. It slipped out. I better sure make sure the other one didn't do the same. You know, the other one's good. It's just this one here. The um, the belt is slipped onto the motor shaft instead of on the pulley, so that would certainly result in a wrong speed. Dental pick to the rescue. Possibly to even reach it. Let's see what I'm doing. Here we go. All right, now it's in the right place. When I spin the caps, and you see the other one turning. So this one's ready to go back together as well. We assemble the screw that holds the head circuit board in place. And that will do this. Now, once I put all that together, it should not work better work. I guessed on the size of the belts. I don't know what size they use. So I just used some belts that I had kicking around. I'll have to get some more. I'm running low on, on different size belts. These were just ones I bought. You know, I bought a belt pack for 30 or 40 dollars about 10 years ago that had a whole bunch of different sizes of belts and uh, they seem to be okay. I certainly wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't go and order a belt kit for something like this because I know there'll be people on eBay that sell, you know, belt kits, and they would say, "Oh, this is the exact belt kit specifically for this unit," and they want a small fortune for it. And the, the problem is when you're. That might be fine if you're buying the belts to do yourself, and you don't mind spending thirty or forty dollars for a belt kit for. You know for your own use but um, when you're doing it for someone else uh, telling them that I need to buy a belt kit that's going to cost me $40 plus uh, you know another $30 shipping to get it sent to me 
um, and then I got to charge you to put the belts in. That's when they walk away from it because uh, it just becomes too expensive for for what it is, um, a basic cassette player. So if I can get a if I can get a belt kit that I can buy reasonable, you know, maybe ten or ten bucks or fifteen dollars for assorted belts that might have enough belts in there that I can fix three or four or five machines, then um, then it makes it worthwhile to spend the money on them. But spending you know spending forty five dollars for four belts, which is typically what they would charge you, you know, two caps and then two other belts, they charge you thirty or forty dollars plus shipping. It just becomes uneconomical to do. And even the guy that owns this, he had to kind of think about it for a while. Initially, he said, don't do it. I'm not spending the money on it. And then when I was talking to him today, he says, ah, you know, maybe we'll fix the tape deck. So that's what we're doing. So the deck's back in place. Put the two screws in. And then there's the one more screw that holds down this dampener for when it opens. And then they got to put the spring around it. Got a spring that goes on here and through the back of the spring goes on like that, and then this goes through the back here, I think, like that holds it in place. That's the spring. So now when I open the, the uh, cassettes up. Okay, now of course we can plug the preamps into the heads. nose cone goes on. It just kind of sits in place like that and then there's two screws that hold that in place. There's actually a couple of little slots on the side here that will lock in, like that, on both sides. I'm referring to there's a little slot right there and right here that locks in place. And that should do it. Then I can plug this thing in and we'll see whether we, it works before I put the top on. I guess we'll try the tape deck out. Deck A. Sounds like it's working to me. How about the reverse direction? I think that's the end of the recording there. Try another tape. That one doesn't have a bunch of full recordings on it, it's just got partial recordings because that's one that I use for recording on. So let's get the other tape out here. We'll check all the modes and make sure that everything works. You can't really see much on this unit, but fast forward. Play. Reverse play. The other deck over here. And it's also working. Fast forward. Fast forward is working. Rewind is working. shining my bright light on here just so I can see um, 
the reel is turning. Fast forward, rewind, play, reverse play. There we go. So I think that's uh, that, uh, that's about does it on this one here. Everything seems to be working. The other two belts are still holding up for driving the reel tables. It was just these ones were slipping a bit. So we'll just leave it at those two at this point and uh, say thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. And for those that ask why I didn't change the other two belts, I didn't have them. I didn't have ones close enough to fit. But the ones that are on there, they're not turning. They're not turning to, to mush like the other ones. They've just lost a little bit of their elasticity. These two old belts, I probably will throw them in the microwave and boil them for a bit and see if the elasticity will come back on them because this is generally the type that do recover when they've just lost a bit of elasticity. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.